midday, I'm Mark. Selling long kitchen knives should be banned. News. We listen to it, watch it and read it every day. But what is it and where does it come from? And who decides what's going to be in the news? You can never explain what news is because it's, it's never the same two days or even two hours running. Over five programmes, we'll explore news from different angles, newspaper, radio and television, and try to unravel the mysteries behind it. You might have a day that your, your top story is, is a really funny story. Um, you might have a day when your top story is, is going to move people to tears. You have reached the Durham Constabulary Voice Bank. Information for you and an appeal for witnesses regarding an incident which occurred in Kendrew Street at Darlington. It's 5.20 in the morning and Dan Entwistle has been at Century FM in Gateshead for over an hour, preparing their early morning bulletin. You get up at 3.30, get the taxi at 4 o'clock, just after 4 o'clock, get into Century FM. The main thing overnight is actually seeing what's happened um, across the North East. We've got several police forces we have to contact. Um, there's fire brigades, ambulance services, a big area and a lot of different things happening. Each of the North East Police Forces has a system where they record stories from overnight or bit of information for us and we can Good listen morning, to that. Past midnight. No incidents have not been part Which is you might think good, having nothing to report, but it means the job's a little harder because you've got to work a little harder to find news. News is something that's of interest to someone. That's the starting point. It has to be in some way a deviation, a blip, the deviation from the norm. Things are going along in a straight line and then there's a kink, and that's what news is. You know, um, Alan Shearer hasn't scored a goal for the last six games and he scores. It's news. Alan Shearer scored a goal every one of the last six games and then he doesn't score. It's news. Dan's first bulletin is at 10 to 6. It's the day of the European Cup final and one of the big stories will come from Istanbul. We have access to reporters all over the place and um, one of our reporters, our sports reporter, Gary Weeb, is actually out in Istanbul at the moment. I was hoping to contact him there and get um, a little bit of a two-way from the show for... Uh, 10 to 6. What we'll do, we'll actually contact him later on. It is probably about an hour earlier there. That's one thing, getting up early in the morning, your standards are slightly different. You expect the world to be awake when you're awake and quite often they're not and they don't get, you don't get the nicest of reception sometimes when you give people a call at this time. This time of the morning, quite often, a lot of the news you get, especially the national news, is something will happen. The Prime Minister will unveil a particular scheme, um, a, a new law will happen today, things like that. So quite often it's, it's not actually reactive news, it's almost looking ahead to yes. what's happening later on. OK, bye. That was the studio. Um, just telling us how long we had to the uh, beginning of the bulletin because of course you're thinking in different things they've got their own job to do the northeast number one for 80s 90s and now this is century fm a very good morning to you the music goes out on a computer the adverts go out everything's timed and scheduled and they've got their timings i've got to fit in with them they've got to fit in with me quick phone call there just to let me know we've got five minutes to go so um there we are morning Morning. Morning, Dan. Morning, Dan and your crew. <laughs> oh, Dan. Very impressive. And your pussy. You've got to be able to, to, to say things, especially in a um, fairly short bulletin. You've got to be succinct. You've got to be to the point. You've got to make sure your scripts have impact, that you, you tell the truth, that you include the facts, you keep it to a minimum, but you don't leave out the detail, but you don't waffle. Yeah. Bed. Yeah. Voice. Yeah. Sex. Uh-huh. Bed. Uh-huh. Jackson. Yes. Something Spanish. Um, <laughs> Five. Al yeah, Al Qaeda. Six. Al Qaeda. P. M. Q. S. Murphy. Murphy. Tories. Yes. Bed. Yes. Walk to school. Issue self queuing. Yeah. Beds. Yeah. Sport. Liverpool three and Liverpool two. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Super. The great thing about radio is it's so reactive. If something happens, we can break it. You know, literally 30 seconds after something happens, we can go on. We can, you know, break into it and say, "News flash, this has happened." With press and and with TV to a certain extent, TV can do that, but people don't necessarily. You have to be sat in front of a TV. You literally have to make the choice. I'm going to watch TV. Radio's often on in the background. It's part of people's lives in the distance, and you know, we can get to them straight away. It's the way it is with me, Dan Entwistle. Good morning. Apple to brace for this morning's exodus from Liverpool to Turkey as thousands of football fans head.
for the Champions League final. Now, by 10 o'clock, 20 planes will have jetted off from the city to Istanbul. Two men have been arrested after a woman was carjacked at gunpoint in Darlington. Sex scenes from TV shows could be studied by school children in Britain's classrooms. Now, it's certain Michael Jackson won't give evidence at his own trial. There's increasing speculation one of the world's most wanted terrorists may be seriously injured or even dead. The way it is, it's just coming up to 6 o'clock. I'm Dan Entwistle. Century FM Breakfast with me. There's another two hours before anyone else will join Dan in the newsroom. It's the hardest part of the day in as much as um, you've got to do a lot of stuff in quite a short period of time. It's the easiest part of the day in many ways because things have happened overnight. You're first with the news and it's all sort of presented to you, if you like, as a news story. So, um, yeah, it's hard, but I love it. News editor Rick Martin arrives to take over the running of the news desk pretty much got an idea of what's happening in the day before you set foot through, through the door, which is, is good in a way, because uh, it sort of prepares you for, for what's coming up. Then it's a case of, of deciding which stories we cover, which stories do we do longer pieces on, which stories do we do interviews on, um, and then deploying the journalists out to those. Is it APTX? Was it the BBC one? Dan's checking to see if he can get an interview following up the lead story in the journal. Right, yeah, if we could do it on ISTN, that would be great. They claim to have found some sort of cure for MRSA on the seabed of the ocean in, in some little bug or micro thingy. So I'm going to find a scientist to find out exactly what those micro thingies are and hopefully make that into a story. If it was a national story, we'd be running it. But because it's Newcastle University, even more so, it becomes a regional story because it's something happening on our patch. I think the immediacy of radio is certainly what got me into it, and I think that's hopefully what the listener, you know, if the listener is, is getting the message that there's a big story happening, then, you know, radio is more available. It's nine o'clock. Rick here with Century FM News. It's not porn, Mum. It's homework. And on the road, queuing traffic on the A174 westbound at the A19. Northeast scientists claim the cure for the hospital superbug could lie on the seabed. Researchers at Newcastle Uni have reportedly found a potential cure in sediment at the bottom of the sea. Some news just in, and a car bomb's exploded in Madrid, injuring one person. Police say they received a warning before the blast. Century FM transmits right across the North East, from the Scottish borders to North Yorkshire. There are normally seven journalists in the newsroom, but today there are only four. Ian Haslam is preparing to go out on a story at the Metro Centre, and Michael Pullen is off to do a story in Morpeth, where three houses are being set on fire to compare sprinkler systems. It's one of the many press releases that come through, and it's... It very often, I mean, there's a knack to writing press releases that some people don't have, and it's all in the, the top line essentially if it sounds like it's going to be a good story then it generally is and that, that's the way we, we, we choose these things so hopefully it'll uh, be worth covering it's, it's a visual story but fires create an awful lot of noise too so so hopefully we'll get something in the background on the on the uh, on the recording which will sound good jacket <laughs> there we go when the chips are down and you only have a handful of reporters to cover a particular edition or a particular program or broadcast they're going to choose the easy options, aren't they? And the easy option is the printout from the police. The easy option is the agenda from the planning committee of Sunderland City Council. The easy option is the press release from people who have something that they want to get across. Ian's driving to the Metro Centre. DJ Matt Wilkinson is going with him to get an interview for his programme. This Friday we're doing something called fashion dyslexia, which apparently uh, men suffer from. It's a condition that, that women have labelled men who just can't dress themselves, basically. Yeah, I'm doing a story about mall walking, which is basically, um, they're doing a little scheme where they've worked out that if you walk past every shop in the metro centre, uh, you've covered two and a half miles, which is obviously quite good for uh, keen shoppers. So um, I'm going to ask him a few questions about that. I don't see the point coming up with a, a set of ten questions that you, you want to ask, because people might start talking about much more interesting things and it's I'm no expert on fire for instance today's story I'm no expert on fire this guy is he might come up with something that's a nice line and, and could even be a, a bigger line than the story itself you know what I mean if you walk past every uh, shop front in the centre you walk about two and a half miles now we're not suggesting that you have to do that every time you come to the centre but it's certainly one way of keeping fit really
See, I'm quite poor, so I just do a little bit of window shopping. I may not want to cover the full the full distance. Um, what, where does that leave people like me? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's certainly not compulsory. Um, the idea is to encourage people to do to do some uh, fitness while they're shopping. Um, it's not something we're going to make people do at all. I wouldn't normally do it walking around, but considering this is all about walking, <laughs> I thought I'd just uh, walk along and do it at the same time, and we can see a bit of the metro centre and go past the shops as we do it. So. We've got to get a bit of the atmos, uh, because if we were just stuck in a, a little room, then obviously there's no sound there, but here we can hear people talking as they go past, the sound of like, you know, the pram wheeling past, so it just gives it more atmosphere, and I think you need as much colour as you can on radio, obviously on TV you can film it, you can see everything, but on radio we need all the sounds we can get. Gail, what are my fashion faux pas? Where do I start? <laughs> You've got a washed out t-shirt that looks as if it's been through the ringer, I don't know how many times it's faded. You've got a ski jacket, it is now nearly June. You've got a pair of tracksuit bottoms on. And they're not tracksuit bottoms. They are, well, they look like tracksuit bottoms. They're, and a pair of trainers. And for work. Would, would it surprise you if I told you that I'd probably wear this on a night out as well? I'm horrified. It's almost surreal, isn't it, when you come to think of it, the fact that you're tuning in to something else that's happening in the distance um, and you can't see it. You can only feel it and hear it and imagine it. And radio at its best is a most dramatic medium for that. Century FM, the northeast number one for 80s, 90s and now. It's midday. Rick's here with Century FM News. Police in Greater Manchester are hunting an axeman who raped a pensioner and held her hostage in her own home. The news team have been producing hourly bulletins since 6 o'clock this morning. There's another five and a half hours to go before their main tea time news. I am influenced by other people. Obviously, you're influenced by what the tabloids are, are leading on, what, what other news organisations are leading on. In here, it's my decision. Um, so, you know, I, I will be the first to admit if I get it wrong. You've, you've just got to justify the decision as to, as to why you're leading on certain stories. At Century FM News, I'm Rick Martin. There's more in the way it is at 1 or on the website, 100centuryfm.com. If you look at a good product, if you look at a good newspaper, a good television programme, you will have the hard news element. You will have the, the, the sport, important people. Sex, of course, finance, conflict, blame but harmony as well. Things that are very local rather than national. Things that are immediate rather than have happened a long time ago. All these little things come into it. We like clever writing. Um, for example, we did a story yesterday about Marks and Spencers not making as big profits as, as it used to. And I think the top line was underwear is not supporting Marks and Spencers like it used to. So things like that, which might make the listener smile, but they're not just crowbarred in for the sake of getting a pun in there. Journalist Michael Pullen is in Morpeth covering a story about sprinkler systems. He's having trouble finding where it is. There are some journeys you make thinking, this is a waste of my time. But very often when, when you're thinking that, that's when you have the most fun and you, you, you try and do something a little bit more creative. Yeah, for a press conference. Back where we came from. That happens to be an awful lot. You, you think, why am I coming out to the bag of beyond to cover this? But very often it's, it's, it's the most fun. Clearly, there it is. Excuse me, sir. We can have a quick word. I've got any time, sir. Lovely stuff. Keep learning it as a, as a human, sir. Back at the Metro Centre, Ian's been asked by Rick to get comments from shoppers for a story about ID cards. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I think they know quite a lot about us as it is. They know what we've got on all our bank accounts, they know everything about it, they've just got to click on the computers, so ID cards are good. You tend to know the people that will, will speak to you, I think, uh, a lot of the time. If people are kind of walking around like that, you kind of get the hint they're not, they're not going to speak to you. Weaver, While Matt and Ian head back to base, Rick is recording a clip from their reporter at the Liverpool match in Istanbul. Those Liverpool fans that will come in today will be taken straight to the stadium. There's fan parks there for them to entertain themselves with. So it's quite a trek, but uh, hopefully a joyful trek. It's the biggest football story of the day, and certainly with, with the North East audience, um, I think even though it's Liverpool, most football supporters, with probably the exception of Everton supporters, would actually like Liverpool to, to beat AC Milan tonight. So, so there's some interest there. Ah, oh, Deborah. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. 
Right. I just signed it as Frank Spencer there. <laughs> what are you going to do now then? <laughs> Uh, try and retain some dignity after that. We didn't in say we will discover a new wonder drug for anti-MRSA. It's been a long shift for Dan, but he's managed to track down the scientist in the MRSA story. He's recording a chat with him before he goes home. One could have such a variety of different microbes and, 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 and bacteria in the sea. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for taking the time to call us. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Take care now. Bye-bye. i have taken two clips out and... We'll put those into the package. The package should be about 90 seconds long, I hope. Um, but uh, yeah, really great guy, but he, he told me exactly how it works, which was sure interesting if you're a microbiologist. I'll um, package it up, voice it up, give it to Rick, give it to the network, go home. Okay, well, I've done my morning reports. Uh, Rick has been on desk all morning. He's now finished his time. He's putting together the tea time programme. And what I'm doing now is looking at what Rick, Rick's been doing throughout the morning. Uh, he's just, because I've not been here a lot, so I've not heard all the bulletins. He's kind of written what time each uh, story's gone. That's been uh, one of a, a red at a petrol station to be going since 11, another drug raid story going since 10. So I've got to like work out which ones to drop, which ones to keep. So I'm just kind of getting rid of the, the morning stuff. Uh, the last thing you want to do when people are driving home from work is uh, be playing the same clips and the same stories without any change than they've heard when they were going to work. It's two o'clock, the latest Century FM news. Now here's Ian Haslam. Porn and sex scenes from TV shows are to be brought into the classroom. We look at a, a sort of 33 year old female with kids. That's the person when the guys open the mics, that's who uh, they're talking to. And we need to make sure that our news is focused and and meets their lifestyle. You know, in the morning it's fairly fast paced because in the morning um, Debbie, as we call her, is rushing around. She's got to get the kids ready. She's got a lot to do. As the day progresses, there's more time on the hands. Perhaps the kids are at school, um, she's at work or she's at home. Um, she can then absorb more information. So we tailor the news around that. Michael is still out on the fire story. He found the houses a while ago, but they've only just gone up in smoke. There's a very severe fire burning in that room now. You can tell just by looking at how hard the, the, the force with which the smoke's coming out of the door uh, into the corridor still and the force with which it's coming out of those windows, it's being pushed out by the heat. In television, it's all presented there in front of you. But on radio, you have to use your creative imagination. You have to imagine that you can picture what happened. And that is much more exciting and sophisticated than being told something abrasively with mov moving pictures on the national news. It is a visual story, it's very much a visual story, but I've got enough. It's not something that's going to run in bulletins, it's not newsworthy enough for that, so it, it, it's something that will go in the 20-minute, half-an-hour programme tonight. It's been an average news day, I think. Um, there's not been a, an awful lot really to grab the attention as a, as a really good lead. It's one of those days where, you know, we've had three, three leads through the day, so that there hasn't been one lead throughout the day which you know, can be quite nice because it sort of varies, varies the story that the listener's listening to. Um, stories have developed quite nicely through the day, so you know, we've, we've found out more about the plans for sex education in schools, we've found out more about the, the ID card scheme and things like that, so we've, we've really built on, the, on the, the building blocks that we had this morning and, and just put a bit more flesh on the bones for, for this evening. And we're here today to demonstrate the benefits of domestic sprinklers and water. The final piece to be edited is the fire story. There are very few still in domestic properties, and what we really want to do is save lives, and that's what these pieces of equipment do. It just needs some music adding to it. That works for me. Basically, my, my day's work, or my morning's work, is results in a minute and 37 seconds. That was the, the bulletin that Dan had at five, 10 to 6 this morning on about six pages of, of paper. Uh, this is the bulletin for tonight, which is probably on about 30 or 40 pieces of paper. The programme's ready, but what's Debbie, the target listener, doing right now? Just pick the kids up from school and hopefully just about to, to listen to the way it is. Ladies, ladies, Century FM. 
I'm Rick Martin. Now, how would you feel about your children learning about sex from Coronation Street or Hollyoaks? Well, new plans have been launched to get teachers talking about sex education through the media. Northeast scientists claim the cure for the hospital superbug could lie on the seabed. They found a new breed of bacteria down there which might kill infections like MRSA. More from Century's Dan Entwistle. MRSA is never out of the headlines these days. Newspaper journalists sometimes disparagingly say that they're providing the news list for the local for radio and television, uh, rightly or wrongly. But obviously we all, we're all pretty incestuous. We all benefit from each other. Two couples in Belgium are fighting over a baby girl who was apparently promised to both of them by a surrogate mum. The owner of Britain's first offshore off-license off the northeast coast is selling his backy boat on eBay. It's presented tabloid, but the balance of stories is much more user-friendly. It's schools, a bit of sex, a bit of football, um, uh, uh, the backy boat. It's it's unusual stuff mixed together the way a news, uh, any news service should be. Northumberland County Council's burned down three houses, all in the name of fire safety. The demonstration in Morpeth helped launch a water sprinkler system costing £3,000, which they say will save lives. The battle over ID cards is back as the government looks to reintroduce a new version of the bill, which faltered at the end of the last parliament. I'm all for it. Terrorists get into all the countries regardless. I don't know whether ID cards will make it any better or not. Michael Jackson's defence team is set to rest its case today without the singer taking the stand. Jay that kind of stops the show, doesn't it, Michael Jackson? It's the celeb thing. Celeb shock. I think they're justified in using it wherever. I think there are certain stories running at the moment which you'd use, wouldn't you? And if you can't localise it to Kate's head, it doesn't really matter about Michael Jackson. It has to go in. Mal walking has arrived in the northeast, and bosses at Metro Centre have walked out, have worked out even that you'll walk two and a half miles if you pass all the shops. Spokesperson Jane Holmes. It's certainly not compulsory. Um, the idea is to encourage people to do to do some uh, fitness while they're shopping. Ian's in the studio to read the sport. I'm Ian Haslam. Liverpool fans are gearing up for tonight's Champions League final with AC Milan. More from our man in Istanbul, Gary Weaver. The tens of thousands of Liverpool fans are ready. Century FM. The way it is. Century FM. That's the way it is. I'm Rick Martin. And that was news to them at Century FM Radio on Wednesday the 25th of May 2005. As tight as the proverbial uh, badger's bottom. Wasn't that just splendid? <laughs> I think it's the immediacy of radio that really seizes me. It's absolutely instantaneous. And there's no other medium like that for in which news is occurring in that moment, I believe. That's the magic of radio for me.